We have headed back to Manitoba to Lake Winnipeg to go after greenbacks. Good sandwich fish, huh? Very pretty. Oh. That's what we come up for, buddy. Yeah, man, Lake Winnipeg's awesome. It's huge. There's a chance at a giant greenback. That is a big fish. There we go. Oh, yeah. You can tell by the mark. Holy cow! Dude, this is what we came up here for! Yes! Giant greenbacks! Look at this! Holy cow! Manitoba is an amazing place to go. We are back. As you can tell, there's snow on the ground. It's way colder than it was last time we were here. We brought the augers, the warm clothes, the short rods, and we are going to tackle the, the mighty Lake Winnipeg. We're going after greenbacks. Yeah, Lake Winnipeg's huge. It's got a ton of fish in it, and we got a shot at some true giants. And numbers. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get to her. Let's tackle it. I'll take an auger from you, sir. Thank you. I'll start drilling. Staring at the minnow. Right now we're on the south basin of Lake Winnipeg and it is a massive lake and it doesn't have a lot of structure. So what we've been looking for on the Mega Live is bait. That's what these walleyes were relating to. We're scanning out here and we're finding a lot of the bait and fish are staying, you know, three to six feet under the ice. Oh, and Ty's got one working right now. There, there, there he is, go. nice. <laughs> we done, sir. Time. This feels like a little better fish. Boy, I had to really work for him. Now this is what you come to Manitoba, to Lake Winnipeg for, Jake. Now I'm not saying they don't get bigger than this, but this is a pretty darn good fish. Look how pretty that greenback is. Whoa, that's pretty. I'm gonna hurry up and get it back. We're actually fishing some pretty cold day temperatures today, so I don't wanna mess around with these fish. Again, these are big fish. Here we go, we're gonna let her, let her go. Wow, there we go. Goodbye. <laughs> That's there what we're coming sir. up here for. Got him, there we go. That's better. That's what we're looking for. Nice chunky one. And right now we're on a school. There is a lot of fish down there. So we'll get him back quick and catch another, but man, just such a gorgeous fish. There's the school of bait, and there's a big walleye sitting right under it. And then we've got another over here, and we're just panning around. There's another, there's, there's a real big school of minnows. And then, there we go, that's, that's a great example of those fish, how high they're sitting in the water column. And you can't really read them on 2D sonar, so it's nice to know that they're in the area you can really, they really pop out here on Mega Live. That's just a big walleye sitting in between three bait schools. There he is. I bet you he's full of minnows. <laughs> he's got a couple in him. I definitely fed this guy. Look at that. There's a nice green back. Got him that time. Oh, good come one. here, buddy. There we go, look at that. That is a tank, Jake. Oh. That's what we come up here for, buddy. Look how fat that thing <laughs> is. is. A chunky one. It hailed it, too. Yeah, there's no question it wanted the spoon. That barbless that pops right out. Cool, man. That's right, come to Winnipeg. That's awesome. All right, back he goes. 
There we go. He's a little higher up. Ooh, this is a little, feels a little nicer. Nice. Let's get him turned. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh my gosh. Look at this, Jake. Oh, you need help? I got him. Nice. <laughs> Look at this absolute tank. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my gosh. This is why I've said it once. I'll say it a million times. We talked about it on the way up, Jake. This is why you come to Lake Winnipeg for these giant greenbacks just like this. Look at the size of it. They're just so fat all the way through. Look at the head. I mean, they're just built different. We get a quick picture and we're gonna get her back in. <laughs> just an absolute stud. Wow, man, I think we're gonna catch, we're gonna catch a few of these, man. You know, let me show you just a couple of the baits that we've been catching most of these uh, greenbacks on. And you know, a lot of guys come up and it's fine. They, they obviously the walleyes bite on really big baits, but what Jake and I have found is that actually a, a vertical bait has been key on this trip. And it hasn't been the real big ones either. It's just a quarter ounce spoon. What I've been using mo mainly is this Northland coffin spoon. As you can see, it's just got that little extra flare on it, that little tail and it's got a rattle inside it. And Jake's been using pretty much the same color. It's that Wonder Bread White. And again, as you can see, it's got the BBs in that chamber. It's making that sound. And again, it's that quarter ounce. So this is a, that PT rattling spoon from Clam. So those are the two main baits we've been using all day long catching these walleyes. And again, they're not big baits, but they've got sound and they've got the right color. You know, tomorrow, it could be pink or yellow, chartreuse, or whatever it may be. But if, as soon as you find that color that they're keying in on, you really need to focus on that and really change it up and it's gonna pay off. You're gonna catch not just a few walleyes, but a lot of fish. Another one coming right hot right behind it. There he comes, he's gonna eat it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that is cool. Nice fish. Ah, he's okay. Heel. Oh, an eater. You know what? I'm gonna get the measuring stick. I think, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There we are. Let's measure him, Jake. The nice thing is you can actually take four home per guy. It's gotta be under that 55 centimeters. This has got both on it, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. This guy's going in the in the cooler. All right, so right now we've kind of found an area where there's a lot of fish in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a set line with a live fat head. And I'm gonna put it about four feet down where, I've, where we've been seeing a lot of those bigger fish crews on the Mega Live. And get this set up and hopefully we can stick a big green back. So I've got a slip knot here to mark the depth. I had it set deeper right around seven feet, but I'm gonna change that so this bait's only a couple feet under the ice. So we've been seeing a lot of those fish crews go a little shallower. That'll work. Get just tail hook. And I actually have a little bait button somewhere here. Help keep this minnow, because it is barbless and I don't want my minnow to get off. It's a bait button. You can use a piece of plastic too, um, but that keeps that minnow pinned on there. There we go. So now, fish comes by, grabs that minnow, trigger goes, flags up, the line releases, and I'm good to go reel it in. The 
The walleyes out here on Lake Winnipeg get big, and it's nice to have a medium power to medium heavy power rod. Now I've got two options here. This one's a 38 inch, this one's a 36 inch. And it's really nice to have those longer rods because you're dealing with big fish in shallow water and you need to absorb those head shakes. And I've got it paired up with a Daiwa Revros. This is a 1000 LT. Again, got a super smooth drag and you need that for these big fish. And I have two options, one's braid and one is advanced mono. They're both in a 10 pound test. When it's nice out, I like to use the braid, but when it gets cold, you have a lot of ice buildup and that's when I switch over to the mono setup. And then I've got them both paired to a barrel swivel and then about a 14 inch, 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I've got snap swivels on both so you can swap out lures quickly. And that's really what you need when you come out to Lake Winnipeg and it works for fish of all sizes, but hopefully, got a few fish down there, hopefully we can get one of them. There he is. Oh yeah. Ooh, there we go. This one, I think, is gonna have to go back. He's over, I think, look at that guy. He was, it's really interesting. We've been seeing these fish all over the water column. We're in about 14, 13, 14 feet of water. And it just seemed like I was seeing most of the big fish coming right off the bottom. It seemed like those eater-sized walleyes were suspended probably, I don't know, six feet, maybe halfway down. This was a real nice fish. This is gonna be over that 21 and a half inches or 55 centimeters is, um, that we have to release. So cool, huh? Get her back. There she goes. Boy, Lake Winnipeg is just an amazing lake. It's so massive. You're talking about just Canada. It's the sixth largest, but three of those are actually bleed down in the US. So Lake Winnipeg is the third largest freshwater lake in Canada. And when you're talking about big, you're talking about a lake that's over six million acres. Now that's pretty massive. So you're trying to pick apart a lake like this and go, I mean, most of the lake is pretty shallow. What we're fishing in the wintertime is that 10 to 14 feet of water. We're gonna pick this, this lake apart as best we can and catch a bunch of fish this week. Oh, there we go. Here the force his head up the hole. Look at that. Oh, yeah. One there, and Jake's flag is up. I think we might have a double. Look at that. Perfect. This is one for the box. Filling up the cooler. There we go. A good sandwich fish, huh? Very pretty. Another one for the cooler. Still on there. Yeah. This is a big one. This is a big one, Jake. I you hope. Feel it. Taking a bit of line drags, feels good there. Yeah. Rod's loaded up. Got him. Feels decent. Think we got one of those probably slot fish. We'll see though. Come here, buddy. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. Ooh, nice chunky one on set line. Barbless pops right out. Beautiful green back. We're gonna let him back go and get much bigger. Ooh. There we go. Got him. Ooh, that one looks like it's going in the box, Jake. We'll see. We will see. He's got a little more juice than that. Yeah, he's feeling nice. Yeah, it's a nicer fish, I think. He came in real slow, but... I think he got a nice fish going on here. I think so, he's having a tough time coming up the hole. We got one of those good ones. Yep. There he is. Oh yeah, beautiful fish, Jake. Beautiful Ooh. fish, man. I'm just gonna slide him up like that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's one of those tubby fish. Yeah. Oh Look boy. Stomach on that thing. Short and fat. Boy, they're just built different out here on Winnipeg. It's crazy. You can definitely tell. I mean, the females are starting to generate the eggs, and those bellies are getting deeper. For sure. Just got that. They're just a cool fish, man. Those are just amazing, aren't they? Just, just beautiful. Stout. 
There she goes on the Mega Live 2. Just released her. Back to the depths. Plug this in quick. Now, no matter where you're heading out in Canada, in the winter or summer, it's always great to have a mobile power source. And that's why we brought the Dakota Lithium Power Box 60. Now this box is necessary, especially out here on the ice. Right, we've been going through a lot of auger batteries, so we're able to charge our auger batteries. We can charge our electronics. It's got four USB ports, so right now I'm charging my phone and a battery at the same time. And as a little added piece of insurance, it's able to jump start the truck. So we did drive that out here. If we do end up getting a dead battery, we can jump it and we know we're gonna be all right and safe. So the Dakota Power Box 60, it's a great thing to bring on any trip you're heading on, but especially those in the Northwoods. I really like these. So you have to keep going back to the weight bucket every time it's sticking your hand in the wet bucket. It's handy not to have to leave fish if they're bunched down there. Right back in the hole. There's one up higher. That one looks bigger. Let's go after him. Yeah, he's going to beat. Yep. <laughs> nice. There he is. He like came straight up after it. That's cool. There we go. Another greenie. Look how cool these things are. I mean, look at the green all the way through the back. Just such a beautiful fish. That would be, let that one go to swim another, uh, fight another day. You know, we keep referring to these fish as greenbacks. Obviously, they're, they're, they're walleyes. It's just a different tint to them. Um, I did a little research on it, and it's actually the limestone in the water that's making these, that's turning these fish that pretty green. It's just super cool how nature gives these different walleyes different colorations. Yeah, but again, they're all walleyes. Yeah, big one. Time. Yep. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Oh shoot, oh, that's yeah. a good eater. Nice eater. Oh, nice Thank work, you, sir. Dude. Just move spots. It didn't take long. No, back to school. Not at all. I'll grab the cooler. Perfect. Thank you. So typically. Most people think of coolers as a summer time piece of equipment. You're trying to keep your beverages cold, your food fresh and cold. Well, the same could be said when it comes to winter time, especially when you're doing exactly what Jake and I are doing right now. We're catching fish in the winter time when it's extremely cold. You're talking 10 below today. And if you were to throw all your walleyes on the ice, within an hour, they're like popsicles. Well, if you do what we do and use a really high-end cooler like Maluna, if you look in here, right now, we, we've been fishing all day long. We've been throwing fish in here all day long, and they look like as fresh as they possibly could be, and they're not frozen. They are all extremely limp and not frozen. Why is that important? Typically, when you get home after fishing, and you're throwing these fish on the ice all day, it takes a few hours to thaw these things out. And even then, they're partially frozen, and you're freezing your hands off when you're trying to clean these fish. What Jake and I are gonna to do today, we're gonna to get back, these fish are nice and cold and fresh, but they're gonna be extremely easy to clean right away. So it's, when you're talking about ice fishing, I would highly recommend getting a very high-end cooler like Maluna to throw your fish in so they don't freeze and you have an easy time cleaning them at the end of the day. Don't be stubborn. Come on, you come this far. There we go. Oh yeah. Jake, this is Coming. a big fish. You can tell by the mark. This is a big fish. So you just head up. <laughs> this is what we've come up here for right here. But he, I can't get his head up. Nice. Coming, and easy, here nice comes. And easy, here nice. comes. Here comes. Here comes. That's a big fish. Oh, holy cow! Dude, this is what we came up here for! Yes! Holy cow! If you want to talk about giant greenbacks, look at this! Holy cow! This is a monster! This is exactly why Jake and I came up to, to fish 
these mammoths up on Lake Winnipeg. What a I beauty. Saw that. Dude. I had to convince him to bike to because he's just like up and down, up and down. But you could tell by the mark on the hummingbird that this thing was an absolute beast. You gotta get up here. Lake Winnipeg greenbacks. They are just a different species. I'm gonna get this back. You ready? Oh, yeah. There she goes. Oh, <laughs> Holy boy. cow. Dude. Whoa, that's just mind blowing. Those things are just another species. That's just a, just a cool fish. And when you can catch those on like a 36 inch rod. Oh. <laughs> through a hole? Through a hole. I mean, we're, that thing barely squeezed through. That's a nine, an eight inch hole. <laughs> I, I could feel it like barely like touching all sides when it came up. That yep. was so cool. That was awesome, man. It's been a great trip, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming with me again. We've had some great trips up here in Manitoba this year.